Don't attempt to move, sir. I shall help you out. I wish instead you'd help me figure out our unpredictable companion here. Oh, this beautiful forest. Ashes, nothing but ashes. And the cabin burned to the ground. The cabin isn't the only thing that's burned up. Millie, will you please... There you are, sir. Now, just lie still on the beach. Oh, isn't it terrible, Jason? Oh, it's not a bad sprain, miss. No, I don't mean that. I'm referring to the fire. Oh, indeed, miss. A veritable holocaust. When you two get through with your scintillating comments on last night's fire, I'd like to intrude with a few remarks of my own. Why, Mr. Woodstrom, I'd almost forgotten you were here. So I've observed. Uh, what was it you wanted to say? Will you promise not to interrupt me until I'm heard out? But of course. All right, then. Millie, you don't mind if I call you Millie? If you wish. Millie, for weeks you've been pursuing me with the avowed intent of marrying me. Not marrying you, just getting you to propose to me. Oh, so now there's a difference. Oh, yes, a big difference. Perhaps I've been naive, but I've always believed that a proposal usually led to marriage. Well, in some cases, yes, but this isn't quite a normal situation. <laughs> You're telling me. You see, Woody, I never really wanted to marry you. That's becoming obvious. Why did you... I had to do it. It all started a month ago in the office. You see, I was having an argument with a bunch of the girls. About me? Not just about you, about all men. Anyway, I made the statement that if a woman was clever enough, she could make any man propose to her in 30 days. That all it took was the right tactic. Oh, and then I assume they challenged you. Yes, that's it. And because you're supposed to be one of the richest men in town, they bet me I couldn't make you propose. Oh, congratulations. You won Oh. oh, I wish you wouldn't look at me like that. Jason, you understand, don't you? Indeed I do, miss. Uh, My original conception of you as being a woman unutterably uninhibited has been conclusively vindicated. Why, Jason, thank you. I knew I could count on you. You, you really dislike me, don't you, Millie? Oh, Woody, I'm sorry. Believe me, it's not your fault. Well, that's a comforting consolation. What is it then? color of my eyes, maybe? Oh, no, you have lovely eyes. If I may interrupt, sir, I should like to suggest that perhaps the basis for the young lady's aversion is the... the community. Oh, no, Jason, it's nothing like that at all. It's his money. Money? But I thought that's what you valued above all else. I wouldn't say that I don't like it. It's just that... Well, look, you've never had to fight for anything. You wouldn't know what it is to be without everything money can buy. In short, you don't want just a wealthy idol. Well, Woody, you can't help it. You're nice, but... Well, you see, the man I marry has to be more than just a, a coupon clipper. I want to respect him for something more than just an oversized bank account. Oh, but, miss, if you permit me to... No, explain. Jason. She's beyond convincing. If only you hadn't inherited all that money. Please, Woody, please, try to understand. I... I understand, Millie. I believe, sir, we should initiate steps to return you to the city. Huh? Oh, oh, yes, I almost forgot. Well, is there any place around here where we could phone? There must be neighbors. You are no better off than we are. Unless I'm mistaken, sir, the area to the west was hardly touched by the fire. Well, then maybe we could find a phone there. It seems very likely, miss. I shall start immediately. Oh, no, no, Jason, you stay here with Mr. Woodstrom. I'll go. Millie, it's at least five miles to the nearest house. Well, somebody has to stay here with you, and I'd prefer it wasn't me. I'll go. You've had your own way so far. Uh, miss, if you'll head straight through that way, you'll come to a path that should lead you to a small settlement. Well, all right, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Millie, are you sure I'm that... positive. Well, <laughs> don't start any fires while I'm gone. I should be back by afternoon. Well, she certainly made a complete fool out of me, didn't she? Yes, sir. It was a dirty, low-down, mean trick she pulled. Quite, sir. She has done everything to warrant my undying hatred, Jason. Oh, indeed she has, sir. Would you think me completely out of my mind if I told you that... that I... I'm in love with her? Yes, sir. I, I mean, if you say so, sir. I'm going to get her back, Jason. I'm going to marry that girl. <laughs> I ever... Hey! Hey, you over there! Who's that? Come on, then, we so I can see you. Uh, well, it's me. What? <laughs> what is the young lady? Uh, what did you expect, a talking squirrel? <laughs> Feels like you've been having a rough time of it, ma'am. That was no golf green I've been walking over. Should have used the trail, <gasps> only about 50 yards uh, over that way. Never mind that. Do you have a phone? I reckon I have. What for? Oh, now, that's a very intelligent question. I want to make a phone call. There's been an accident. Who? No one you'd know. Mr. Woodstrom's from the city. Mr. Woody? 
Is he hurt bad? Uh, you, you know Mr. Woodstrom? Oh, shucks, miss. Everybody around these parts knows Mr. Woody. Well, don't just stand there. Let's get going. But I, I only wanted to phone for one of his cars. Not when I got my flipper handy. Why, oh, shucks, miss. Wouldn't nobody turn down a chance to help Mr. Woody? Come on. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Jenkins, it was terrible. Everything was lost. The cabin was completely destroyed. I guess Mr. Woody was kind of broke up about that. Oh, I don't know why he should be. For a few thousand dollars, he can have another one built. Uh, not like that one, he can't. What do you mean? Why, Mr. Woody built that cabin with his own hands, he did. Done all the work himself, even chopped the trees for it. Took him near six months to do it. Woody built that cabin by himself? Why, I had no idea. That... Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Not many men in these parts are handy with tools and Mr. Woody. Ah, uh, you talk about him as though he were a close friend. Yep. <laughs> Guess Mr. Woody is about the best friend us have up here in the mountains. Why do you say that? Well, I guess you've heard how Mr. Woody's father made all them millions logging up in this country and how when the old man died it all went to young Mr. Woody. Yes, yeah, you were gone. Well, it was just about the time a couple of them big city companies from the city, they tried to drive us loggers out of here. They got a hold of the railroads and were fixing the drivers broke by raising the rates so high for hauling that we couldn't pay. Oh, but I still don't see... Well, ma'am, it was then that Mr. Woody come to our rescue. He figured us how his father made all his money out of logging, that the money sort of belonged here. And so he bought back the railroads and lowered the rates again. Cost him near every cent he had to do it, but, well, we would have starved if he hadn't. Oh, but Mr. Woodstrom's still a rich man. <laughs> That's what most folks think. And that's what Mr. Woody wants him to think. Truth is, Mr. Woody ain't no more a rich man than I. Oh, I don't understand. Well, you see, ma'am, if those city fellas ever found out that Mr. Woody was broke, they'd come swarming in here again and try to get control. Oh, but if they think that Woody's rich, David, they won't try because they'll believe the Woodstrom fortune is still able to fight them. <laughs> ma'am, that's right. Uh, aren't you afraid that I'll go back to the city and tell someone about this? <laughs> No, ma'am. I can tell how you feel about Mr. Woody. You can? Yes, ma'am. You got that light burning in your eyes. You wouldn't ever double-cross Mr. Woody. Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. What's that you say? Speak up. I, I said, please, can't you make this car go a little faster? <laughs> I'm worried, Jason. She should have been back before this. Oh, don't you worry about her, sir. It would take more than an Adirondack forest to stop Miss Millicent from going where she was headed. I never should have let her go. I, I do believe I hear someone coming now, sir. Who is it? Well, it's Miss Millicent and, and Mr. Jenkins. Remember what I told you, Jason. Very good, sir. Oh, you who, Woody? Oh, Jason, how is he? Oh, why is he lying so still? Why isn't he moving? Oh, Miss... I'm terribly afraid that Mr. Woodstrom is having a rather bad time. Uh, we got here as soon as we could. Oh, Woody. Woody, darling, please speak to me. Oh, uh, Lydia. Uh, He's been like that ever since you left, Miss. Delirious. Some uh, sprained ankle, but... Delirious, Mr. Jenkins. Lydia. Where is Lydia? Dearest Lydia. What, uh, what's he saying, Jason? Sounds like he's calling for a gal named Lydia. Is that your name? No, that is not me. Come to me, Lydia. Lydia, darling. Jason, who is Lydia? Uh, Lydia, miss, is a friend of Mr. Woodstrom's. Oh, a sort of a, a, a sister to him, I suppose? Oh, uh, yes, miss, a sort of a sister, I suppose. Oh. Lydia, Lydia, darling. My precious. <laughs> Some sister. Oh, you shut up. Well, I, I guess we may as well start back, Mr. Um, Jenkins. What's the matter, miss? You're not ill. Yes, I am, Jason. And to think that only this morning I could have taken him away from that... that... Lydia, miss? <laughs> yes, Lydia. Oh, Jason, I've been such a fool. Lydia, <laughs> go away, Lydia. Uh, easy now, sir, easy. It's, it's all over, Lydia. I don't want you, Lydia. Uh, I shall try to bring him out of it. Oh, don't you dare touch him, Jason. Woody, oh, Woody, go on. I, I love Millie. Millie, darling. Oh, Woody. <gasps> Millie. Marry me, Millie. Yes, Woody, I will. You will? Yes, but... but... You, you're a witness to this, Jason. Did you just hear her accept me? I did, sir. 
Now, Millie, let's see you get out of this. Oh, oh, Woody, I don't want to get out of this. Darling. Uh, shh, don't talk. <laughs> Delirious, Miss Brandangle. Why, any fool knows... Millie, that... you're not angry with me for pretending that I was delirious. Oh, of course not, darling. Jenkins, may I borrow your car? I want to make sure that Millie doesn't change her mind until I have a chance to change her name. The curtain falls in the final act of Marry Me Not. Our star, Richard Conti, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. You new high school graduates, your education need not stop now, nor do you have to give up thoughts of a career either. You can have both further education and a career. And the answer is the U.S. Army. Yes, you can continue your education through the Armed Forces Institute. At the same time, you'll be learning a worthwhile skill or trade while furthering your career. How can you do this? By selecting the Army Technical School you wish to attend and then, upon acceptance, enlisting in the Army. Yes, you have your choice even before you sign the enlistment papers. And there are nearly 60 different specialties from which to choose. So why don't you look into this, high school graduates? Get the list of Army Technical Schools from your local recruiting station now. Pick the specialties that appeal to you most. If you qualify, you're putting yourself in line for a great career with lots of opportunities for further education. Now, once again, our star, Richard Conti, and our producer. We'll leave Woody and Millie in their new state of delirium and bring our star, Richard Conti, before the curtain into the footlights so you may know him as his intimates do as Nick. I like this part of the performance also, C.P., where we have a chance to meet our friends in this informal way, no script to read, and we can just be ourselves. Well, Nick, I suppose everyone has seen your recent picture, Northside 777, so what's up next? I've just completed Martin Rome out of 20th Century Fox. Fine, we'll be on the lookout for it. And now, from the screen to the canvas, how is your hobby, oil paintings, coming along these days? Well, the great American masterpiece is still in my mind. With your talent, I'm sure you'll get along all right. And by the way... You've never had an art lesson in your life, have you? Nope, not a one. Now, that is ironical. Well, how's that? Well, New York's Greenwich Village is packed with artists who have studied hard and long. And exhibit their paintings year after year in Washington Square and in cellar spaghetti houses and restaurants. And then dream of fame and fortune, which some obviously deserve. Uh, isn't it the truth? And you know, C.P.? Yes? My hobby is beginning to really pay off in money. You sell them? <laughs> now, C.P., you know they aren't as bad as that. <laughs> Hallmark just bought one of my recent oils for a Christmas card, and I do one a year for them. Now I'm really going to turn them out. Christmas cards? No, paintings. Oh. How about taking your order for some, C.P.? Paintings? No, Christmas cards. Oh, well. I don't know what my friend Ralph Cardoza would say. You see, he always designs my greeting cards. Well, I can't get them all. <laughs> now from canvas to four sheets, what's the billing for next week, C.P.? Next week, we present Wayne Morris in the comedy titled Sam Cyclotron, the Cosmic Kid. Wayne plays the part of Johnny Spear, originator of the popular Sam Cyclotron comic strip. The painting ambitions of Johnny Spear's fiancé for him involve them both in a series of exploits that parallel the adventure strips and experiences of the Cosmic Kid. Well, that should be good. I'll be tuned your way. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Nick. Join us next week, won't you, ladies and gentlemen, when we present the fast-moving comedy Sam Cyclotron, The Cosmic Kid, starring Wayne Morris. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Conti appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Sam Locke, with orchestra under the direction of Eddie Scrivani. This program is rebroadcast to the armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, proudly we hail next time presents Wayne Morris. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. 
Wendell Niles speaking.